There's a podcast I listen to called Back to the Roots Podcast. I absolutely love it. It mostly deals with dairy farming. I know I've talked about it before. But there was a quote on there, and it was an Amish dairy farmer talking about a quote that he heard from somebody else or a phrase that he heard from somebody else. And that phrase was, nature always bats last. And the idea is that we can try all that we can. We can do the best to set up whatever it is, you know, check the weather forecast, make hay on the perfect day, and then, you know, a spot shower pops up out of nowhere and our hay gets rained on. I've had that experience more than, um, you know, more than I would like to admit, and I don't make that much hay. The nature in this instance, and probably one of the biggest nature problems that we deal with on our farm is water and erosion. And it is, I'm just gonna say, it is hard to deal with. This pipe right here, it goes under the road, on the other side of the road, it kind of collects there and comes through here. And I wanna kind of take you on a walk of the erosion of our farm, the challenges that we have, and maybe just kind of throw it out there for ideas. Um, Cause we're not getting rid of this pipe and water has to have a place to go. So how do we help water and live with water and uh, have this uh, great symbiotic relationship with water? Or maybe we just dam this whole thing up and uh, start water skiing. I don't know. What I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna take you on the path of the water that comes out from here. We're also gonna kind of point the camera up at some other water issues that we have coming down that deal with that reclamation, let's call it that five acres or seven acres, eight, nine acres of reclamation that I'm dealing with. So I'm gonna speed this up because we're gonna be taking about a, oh, well, it's gonna be a little more than a quarter mile walk through this ravine and there are going to be times where i'm going to have to step outside the ravine and uh get get around some log jams and things like that but i'll just kind of take you along for the ride here this pipe right here i think it's just garbage i don't think it comes from anywhere or goes anywhere it's just it was thrown in the ravine at some point so now is where we have two ravines bisecting I think the same is true with this pipe right here that one might have been a tile line at some point but I, I don't ever see any water running out of it very much I guess I should say This ravine right here, well you can see my skid loader over there in the distance. This is where that first ravine is that I've been clearing towards and I've actually got it all cleared now, but that is, believe it or not, a place that 10 years ago, 12 years ago, we could actually drive a four-wheeler across that ravine. There, there, it wasn't there, so that is 14 years worth of washout that you're looking right there and this is where the two ravines join it as you can see there's ravines this is the pasture side of the farm up the hill there to the north is our house and there's washout we have water coming down not all the problems are coming from neighbors fields I'm not at this point I'm not trying to place any blame on anyone I, I want to make that clear I'm just trying to understand how we best work with water where nature bats last how do we uh, you know make that at bat helpful for us or or uh, keep it as long as possible but this is coming from our farm all along here When we get to spots like this here, I am uh, on the bottom of the stream bed, and I would say from the bottom up to the base of this huge tree right here, it goes up and up and up, but is dangerously close to falling in. We're at about seven to eight feet from the bottom to the base of that tree. Here we have another convergence, and this one 
it goes up quite a ways. We'll come back to that one. Let me just take you the length of the farm first. At this point, we're starting to get really, not only in a deep part of the ravine here, as you can see, a lot of wash up, wash out, I guess I should say, right in this area, but we're also in some pretty steep hills part of the farm. The farm at this point does kind of funnel down to here, and so there is a, you know, quite a, it's it maybe, well, it's really bad, I guess. <laughs> there is a lot of erosion. But they're steep sides is what I'm trying to say. Again, this is another entrance ravine coming from our side of the farm. If you've been following the channel for quite some time, this is an area where I'm trying to do some erosion mitigation by putting in hay bales, big round bales. I'm also have begun dumping some composted manure down there as well. I don't know if that's a good idea, but the hay bales seem to be helping. And so I thought, well, let's just add some soil to the game. Again, another big tube that's just down here. I don't know if it was a culvert crossing, you know, 30, 40 years ago, or if uh, it was just rolled down here as part of a uh, junk pile. Up here is one of our main pig woodlots. So again, you can see the steepness and the amount of erosion here. You know, earlier where I said we were about eight foot from the bottom, here I'd say we're a good, oh, 12 feet maybe, maybe more, maybe a little less. The ravine takes a big bend here, I suppose, following the, the natural lay of the land. All right, this is it. You see this yellow marker coming up right up here? This is the edge of our property. A fence over this ravine. It looks like at one point, there used to be a post down here, kind of holding this fence in. And you can see up here some steel posts that have come out of the ground that I assume were at one point somewhat in the ground at least. Come on Rosie, come on. I wanted to come up here and kind of give you a taste. This is actually part of the ground that we are trying to reclaim here. It is a decent slope. As you can tell, just covered in these invasive honeysuckles, just everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. And uh, the thing about them is the pigs do a great job, or the sheep, or the cattle, do a great job clearing the understory, but these big woody invasives like this, they just, they don't do anything with them, or they're not able to do anything with them. In fact, I have learned the hard way that the more you cut them off, the more they spread and grow. Like this one right here, it looks like this tree fell on it, broke off a bunch of stuff, and this invasive said, oh yeah, no big deal. We'll just let these die away. We'll send up a hundred more of these. And I, I think that their roots are somewhat intertwined from plant to plant. But uh, this gives you an idea of, this is that triangle. If you go to the previous video right before this one, you'll see that triangle area in my little slideshow that we're trying to add to the farm and this is that area it has some gorgeous big old oak trees in it that oh man this would be an amazing pig pasture if we could turn it into that again referencing the video that i put out just before this one also i can tell my boys have been out here with their handsaw that they got for Christmas. This is an area that as far as my understanding is somewhere between 30-ish years ago, maybe a little more than that, 
this was actually in row crop production. And if you look closely, I hope you can see on the video, I am walking down a path of trees on either side of me here. As Rosie goes ahead of me, it's easy walking because this was that tree planting. So I'm gonna take this path and take you to that uh, second ravine that kind of came in that was also one of our water issues to deal with so we can get back here. So I've now made it to that second ravine. This would be the next area we would have to cross if we figured out a solution for the first one where I'm kind of doing my initial reclamation project with the skid steer and fencing and things like that. And I, I'm doing it, I, I'm right here on the uh, property line, that yellow tape right there. That is some tape my wife put up for the boys to let them know where the property line is. And we've got a good idea that this is the property line because we've got good old Iowa barbed wire and, and a really old style T-post right here. This is facing south and this is where it begins. Uh, uh, this, if we would continue this all the way up here and we're not going to, it's not our property, but if we were to continue it all the way up here, it would lead to a crop field. And um, and so that's where the water's coming from. And, and here's our property line. I wanna show you two things and maybe ask your opinion. What I wanna show you is this tile line right here. Now this tile line comes under this tree. So I'm going to say that the tile predates that tree. And it also looks like it's coming from what would be the east. Um, the south is right down there. This is where that ravine comes in from the field um, to the south of us. And so this appears to be coming, you know, uh, on an east-west trajectory. Now I don't see anything on this side where maybe it at one time would have connected into. As I walked down a little further, I found this tile line with this green end on it here, which looks like some sort of uh, joiner or connector. And again, I don't see any tile on this side of the ravine that it could have connected into. Um, so I don't know if, you know, maybe there was an outlet here. Um, but again, this tile looks like it predates the trees that um, are growing over the top of it and so I'll make my way down here. I don't see, like I said, I don't see any other tiles coming in or uh, going out as it were um, on this side and so I've always thought that those were just random pieces of tile that kind of uh, washed into here from you know the field up there or something like that or but maybe, maybe they served a purpose on this piece of ground at some point. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Put them in the comments down below. I'm making my way down right now to where this ravine joins the other ravine. Now, the, uh, the big ravine that I took you on that long walk with. The problem with this one is it's huge, okay? It is, you know, anywhere between right here where I'm standing, maybe six feet tall, to up there 10 feet tall and uh, 20 feet wide, you know, 10 to 20 feet wide, maybe even a little bit more. So I, how we bridge this gap in the future, that is, that is completely out of my realm. Again, I'm open to suggestions at this point or, or who to talk to at this point. Let me, let me get back to a place where we can kind of bring this to wraps. See, here's another one of these and this one's got the spikes in it for the bottom so critters don't crawl up there and whatnot and down to this main ravine here. I wonder if there is a place that would have like a, a tile map. Surely that exists somewhere. I, I would be really interested in seeing that. Okay, now let me get back to a place where we can talk. Well, I'm back where I started and I have my fence row completely cleared out here. Well almost completely cleared out. I need to come back and there's a ton of sticks that I need to pick up and some trees that I need to cut down with a chainsaw 
uh, so that I can get to a few other things. But right here, I'm basically standing on the property line. As you can see, it's mostly clear that way. As I move around here, there's some big trees that are right on the fence line, but they're, they'll actually be pretty easy to get because in doing this, I've made this little road right here in essence. And I think actually, especially if I throw some chains on it right now, I can get down here with 4430 no problem and take a lot of this out. I, I wanted to kind of take you along this journey and show you what we're dealing with. And, and I don't want it to come across as complaining or blaming um, any anything else. I, water is just one of those tricky things to deal with. And, and I love that quote that I heard on that podcast from that Amish dairy farmer quoting somebody else and probably was quoting somebody else. I wish I wish I could attribute it to somebody, but nature does bat last. And so what we have to figure out, especially on this piece of ground, is how we can, you know, make a plan with nature. Say, all right, you're the batter, but uh, how can we work on this together? And, and that's what I would love to do. I, I know that I'm not going to be able to figure it out on my own. I figured out how to clear this. We're, we can put a fence from down there and then behind me and tie into a fence that we've already got over there. We can put the pigs in this part. Um, I'm not gonna leave them in here a long time, just enough to kind of start cleaning it up because I, I would like to kind of come in and clear out as much as I can and, and see if we could get something holding the ground together. But uh, I'm gonna, it's gonna take a lot of people, a lot of help and a lot of time. And in some ways it might even feel a little bit cheaper just to go buy five or nine acres, not that you can go find that close by. Um, but uh, I think it's an important job to do and um, it's a good land stewardship thing. And, and the honest, honest thing is, is that um, land stewardship is difficult. Land conservation is difficult. There's lots of tools, there's lots of smart, smart people and we're just gonna try to bring them along for the ride with us or actually maybe drive the bus for us thank you all for watching uh, i hope that this was somewhat informative i know that it was mostly me talking and walking around and seeing nature but um it was fun i'm gonna take the skid loader back up to the house and grab some lunch have a great day wherever you are whenever it is